Welcome to Masterclass Series. My name is Paul Mashauri and I'm with Azim Jamal and we're talking about auto suggestion. Azim, auto suggestion. Uh, please help us understand auto suggestion. So it's part of again Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow Rich suggestion. It's one of the things, the success principles and mm. basically it implies what you say to yourself. Okay. What is the message you're giving yourself every day to your subconscious mind? Because uh, your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between what is true and false. So if you keep telling your subconscious mind whatever, the subconscious mind kind of believes it. And your conscious mind is very limited in its capacity. The subconscious mind is much, 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 much more powerful. So if you mm. keep feeding your subconscious mind with good thoughts, with positive belief, with faith, with uh, uh, confidence and all the good things about yourself, what you do, the subconscious mind starts to believe it and starts to act it out. So you have spoken about uh, conscious mind and subconscious mind. Maybe beforehand, we would wish to know more uh, the mind. Uh, to what part is it divided? Is it only conscious mind and subconscious mind? And how do this work? So conscious mind is what I'm talking to you right now, what mm -hmm. is coming out of uh, what we're discussing. The subconscious mind is where I draw off all my responses from. Mm -hmm. Because when you ask me a question, Mm. Because I don't know what questions you're going to ask me, I have to then go back in my subconscious mind and respond to you from what I know based on all my years of life, my experiences, my reading, my everything I've done okay. is stored somewhere. Okay. And I access it from there to respond to you. Okay. Yeah. So it's not as conscious, it's not as awake, but it's where everything is stored. Mm. So subconscious mind is primarily like the workshop of the mind? Well, it's where your belief systems come from. It's where your faith comes from. It's where everything comes from. So what has been fed in there is your reality. Mm. True or false is your reality. Mm. Uh, for example, if you say to yourself, you know, I don't have the capacity to do something. You may have a capacity, but because you've programmed yourself in the subconscious mind to believe you don't have the capacity, you believe it. Whether it's true or false, subconscious mind doesn't, doesn't know. <laughs> All it knows is what has been fed. So you're allowed to feed whatever you want to feed the subconscious mind. That's why auto-suggestion is what are you suggesting to you on a regular basis and, and such that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in your life. What are you feeding? What are your thoughts? What are your belief systems? And your subconscious mind can be working every day, every hour, even though you're not uh, consciously thinking about it. Uh, there are people who are said to be very creative and innovative and others not necessarily creative and innovative. How is it connected to the subconscious part of the brain? Well, I mean, there are some natural skills you're born with, mm. okay, which you, there's nurture and nature, okay, nature is what you're born with, nurture is what you are groomed to become. Mm. So even if you were creative by nature, but if you keep feeding your subconscious mind by saying that oh, I'm not a creative person, I don't know how to be creative, I'm a, you know, left brain, logical mm. accountant, if you keep saying that, even if you are creative, you don't believe it. And therefore, you will never be able to manifest it because you shut it down. Mm. You're one of the people who are very, you know, strong and you believe in your own um, abilities and have been doing it not only for yourself but also inspiring people. How do you make your subconscious part of the brain that way? Uh, with the faith, uh, you know, inspired and achieve whatever you've achieved so far in life. So, so 18 years ago when I changed my career, I wrote down, I didn't even start this career. Mm. I wrote down, I am. I didn't write, I will be. Okay. So I wrote down, I'm one of the finest inspirational speakers in the world, at least top 10 in the world. Mm. I've raised $40, $40 million in charity and given away in mm. terms of inspiring people to give. I am, uh, uh, sold the 5.7 million copies of my books. So it was all like, it's a done. It's not, I'm going to be. Mm. So my subconscious mind is always reading and saying loudly, I am, I am, I am, I am. So my subconscious mind thinks it's a done deal. I've been there, I am that one for 18 years, not even now. Mm. So when I meet the top people, I act it out the way, because my subconscious mind already believes that, that mm. I'm there. So when I met Brian Tracy, he's my best <laughs> friend. I didn't feel that, I mean, you know, it just, uh, you hit it off right away. And uh, it was just as if I've known him for a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the idea is, uh, if you have been doing this for so long, 
and then it becomes a reality for you. Mm. As I've met so many people who have uh, those sort of beliefs, they have read so many materials, they're inspired, they listen to motivational materials, but they don't go to another level where they actually do it. They're inspired, yes, and they like to be inspired every day. They keep on reading every day, but that doesn't translate into their daily life. They have dreams, but they don't do anything practical. How do we make sure that uh, the subconscious part of the brain and whatever we have can help us to be more practical, to become doers, and to make things happen and not just have ideas and the belief and the faith? You know, I, Aristotle once said, wisdom is only wisdom if it's practical. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're learning, if it's not practical, if you cannot apply it, then it's question mark wisdom. Mm -hmm. right? So I think people need to ask themselves by what I'm learning and I'm growing by, which is good, mm. but how can I use it on a daily basis? I, am I using it on a daily basis? If I'm not, then I'm not really benefiting from it. Mm. So I think, I think the idea is that, uh, that uh, you know, we have to be able to apply it mm. and no action, no results. Mm. You can have all the wisdom in the world, all the experience, everything, but you're not taking any action. Uh, without action, nothing happens. And if you're talking to someone right now who is ready to start it, is there any practical guideline which you can provide like every day, every month, every year to make sure that now it changes yeah. from just being a thinker to becoming a doer? So let's say today is the day I'm going to change. So sit down and write down your goals. What is my goal three years from now? What is my goal one year from now? What is my goal three months from now? Mm -hmm. What is my goal a month from now? What is my goal next week? It's aligned to my monthly, to my quarterly, to my yearly, to my three-yearly, to my tenure. Mm. Okay, so you become clear. Ask yourself, why do I want this? If the why is strong, the how happens. Yeah. Mm. And uh, what am I going to do to get it? What am I going to do? What, what service will I give to get it? Okay. What's going to be my contribution? Okay. Yeah. And then part of your contribution is taking action. So by doing that process, you go and then you say, I start now. What am I going to do today? It's part of my weekly goals. Mm. And just like Nike, Nike says, just do it, just do it, just do it. And do it aligned to what you want. And suddenly, little by little, you create the ocean. Drop by drop, you create the ocean. Mm. It's amazing how you can get momentum if you're focused on one outcome. Mm. A definite purpose. Mm. A single definite purpose. Mm. You can do everything. But what is that single definite purpose in your life? That mm. is the, 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 the engine. Mm. When, when you are fed up with so many wrong beliefs and negative thinking for quite a long time or you have a friend or you know a partner or a spouse who is so negative and uh, it is um, you know an accumulation of negative experiences acquired over time and he or she is determined to change to become a new person with a new level of thinking how how, how do you now uh, replace a negative belief by positive beliefs in your subconscious mind. So you are one of the persons who have been exposed to all this negativity, negativity and you want to change. Yeah, and you want yeah, to change. Definitely. Yeah, so again, past does not equal the future. Mm -hmm. The past has made who you are, but you're tired of that past. You're not happy about the past and you want to cut. Mm -hmm. You want to cut. You know, there's a whole, whole theory around neurolinguistic science where you say you cut. Mm -hmm. Right? So you actually take an action, you say, I'm cutting. Watch me now. In the past, I used to get affected. In the past, I did this, 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 but watch me now. Mm -hmm. So you got to start telling your subconscious mind, yes, this was our past. You know, this was our past, how we behave, but watch us now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change now. So do whatever it takes to feed you with new things to replace the old ones. The new paradigms to replace the old paradigms. The new outlook that replace the old outlook. The new attitude to replace the old attitude. And the mm -hmm. more you do it, the more you start to see a new person emerging. Mm -hmm. But you make a conscious decision that you want to. Mm. Because you're tired of the old one. It's mm. not fulfilling you. It's mm. not making you happy. It's draining you. It's frustrating. It's not uplifting. It's not exciting. Mm. It's not empowering. It's not energizing. Uh, it's not inspiring. So I don't want to do it anymore. And then you watch how the new, big, new step, new person begins to emerge. And the good thing is, we always have an opportunity to start fresh. Mm. Whether you're 10 years old or 90 years old. There's always a fresh start to wherever you are in your life. Mm -hmm. You can have a goal when you're 100 years old. There's a guy who runs the, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco in the cold weather. Uh, he's, a, I think, 90 years old, or <laughs> old he is, but, mm -hmm. uh, but he runs. And, and uh, uh, 
they ask him, you know, don't you, don't you get frozen and don't your teeth rattle with the mm. cold? He says, I leave my teeth at home. Mm. I run without my teeth. Mm. But yeah, so it's never too late. It's when you want to begin. It's only morning when you wake up. If you haven't woken up, it's not morning here. So in life, if you're sleeping, uh, <laughs> uh, you're sleeping. But today you wake up, that's when you wake up. That's when your life starts. When I had the experience working with the refugees and I cried like a baby, I was 43 years old. I said to myself, I was dead for 43 years. I'm woken up now. My life began a new, new, new chapter. Until then, I was alive. I was an accountant. I did things, but I was dead. So my life started when I was 43. Mm. It's never too late. Mm. This mind training is very useful, and uh, I, I want to connect it to what you always say that it cannot be hurt unless you are ready or you accept to be hurt. If if and, and uh, it's not always easy. As in, for instance, you love someone, or you are in a relationship with someone and it happened that it keeps on hurting you how do i develop that uh, ability not to not get to hurt, hurt? Mm. how do i train my subconscious part of the brain okay i i love him i love her and she keeps on you know hurting and he keeps on hurting and i want to train my brain not to be hurt how do i do that in practical terms so uh, as i said to you before nobody can hurt you without your permission you have to give them permission to hurt you. How? They can do whatever they want. They can insult you. They can be negative. They can react. Bottom line is, you say to yourself, okay, they're saying all this to me. Let me analyze. Is this true? <laughs> if it's true and if I need to change, I'll change. If it's not true, then it's not my problem. It's their problem. They're being mean. They're being rude. They have to worry about it. You know, I gave the example with you last time. was about Victor Frankl. He was abused in a concentration camp. And when he came out, you know, he wrote a book called Men in Search of Meaning and said, nobody can hurt you without your permission. Mm. So he didn't take revenge. He says, I didn't hurt them, so why should I take revenge? Mm. It's their, their problem to worry about. They hurt me. They have to be answerable for, their, for what they did. I didn't hurt anybody, so why should I worry about it? Mm. Mandela went to prison 29 years, came out 27 years, came out and uh, forgive the other people because he said, if I don't forgive, I become like them. Mm. So... The decision is yours. Uh, Stephen Covey used to say beautifully, wherever there's a stimulus, wherever there's a stimulus, somebody says something that hurts you. Between stimulus and response, there's a little space. In that space lies your destiny. How you respond, how you react. Mm. If you go in that small space and you decide, now I'm taking it personally, now I become negative. I'm So that, is, that makes you react differently. Because a flower is a flower. You call flower by any other name, will smell as sweet. You can call flower mud, you can call, call flower garbage, you can call flower you're ugly. The flower is a flower. It mm -hmm. doesn't change it. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is saying something to you, but you know that's not true, it doesn't change who you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the truth. So why are you reacting? Maybe you're reacting because you feel what they're saying is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you put ourselves in the shoes of the, the parents, um, always a parent will do good for the, for the child. But nowadays, there are so many things which are teaching our, our, our kids. You know, you go to the internet, mass media, TV, radio, books. If I want to impart positive uh, energy in the subconscious part of our, our, our children, what are the things I should do every day with my children to make sure that they become, you know, positive-oriented individuals in the subconscious part of the brain? Become a grandparent. Like a grandparent. The grandparents love the grandkids unconditionally. Mm -hmm. They always praise the grandkids. They love them. They don't ask for what grades you get and I judge mm -hmm. you by the grades. The bottom line is, what are you feeding into your kids? Every day you tell them you're amazing. Mm -hmm. I love you. I'm proud of you. Uh, and find positive things to praise, good things that they're doing to praise. Yes, there might be things they're doing bad, but there's some good things they're doing. Mm -hmm. If you keep focusing on the good things they're doing, they feel good about themselves, they end up doing good. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't mean that you don't, you know, become constructive and, uh, but balance it out with a lot of positive uh, vibes because the kids are like sponges. They take everything and they learn more from example than from words. Mm. And, and what about extreme cases, Azim? The extreme cases, even we know for people who are very intelligent, it reaches a level where they go mad, you know, and sometimes uh, they get confused. 
and uh, there are such such cases of people tell oh, poor you are reading so much you know you go mad or get confused um how is it connected to the process of suggestion and how can people balance the same to make sure that they become normal you know uh intelligent uh, they make things happen but not necessarily being confused or going out to become an utopia person uh believing in the things which are not practical things which can't happen things which are not real so they will start feeding their their subconscious mind with a different set of beliefs mm. start saying to the subconscious mind that i am wise i read a lot i am learned i need to apply my knowledge in a proper practical way whatever they want to feed into their subconscious mind this becomes their reality mm. and that changes their 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 uh, their uh, way forward thanks for sharing your insightful information about auto suggestion We're going for the short break when you come back we'll continue with the discussion. My name is Poma Shauri and thanks for watching Masterclass series. But I've been working with the leaders at all levels for the past 30 years mm-hmm. across the world and I've discovered that almost every single leader I've met primarily have three major issues. One is business. What I mean by business, every single leader I've met is always trying to get better in business. So business is always a work in progress. It's never a finished product. Mm-hmm. Welcome back to Masterclass series. My name is Poma Shauri and I'm with Azim Jamal. We are talking about auto suggestion. Azim, I read uh, the book by Napoleon Hill, uh, think in a grow rich like uh, 15 years ago. And in the subconscious uh, part of the brain, it talks about synthetic imagination and creative imagination factor of the brain let's start with the synthetic imagination whereby you have you can you can, you can become uh you know a person with ideas and useful by looking at what other people do reading other people's materials you know watching what other people do and you know improve or combine the same to produce your own uh imagination how can this work in really life for the people who are in business or people who want to advance in their career life So the synthetic uh, imagination is 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 say, more in the box structure mm. this that the other mm. whereas the creative one is outside the box completely and the creative imagination is something that you can tap into other people's brains as well mm. even people who have died okay. and so you have access to all this wisdom everywhere how do you connect into that that part which really is so powerful that you can get ideas that you never thought you'd ever be able to create that's the creative mm. Okay. Right. So the real power is the creative imagination, not just the synthetic, synthetic imagination. imagination. Synthetic has its place, you know, mm. the structures and things that you do, which are systematic, this and the other, but they're still in the box, right? Mm. But the creative one is the most more, much more powerful one, where you tap into everybody else's consciousness. Mm. And uh, how do levels of creativity increase in connection to thinking? So I think it's like things that the thoughts are things. Mm. Whatever thoughts you put becomes your reality. Mm. So if you put thoughts that are so powerful, so outside the imagination, outside the box or or so powerful that that becomes your reality, right? And mm. that's you start to act into that reality. Mm. You know, it's what you're feeding into yourself all the time because the capacity within you is there. But the capacity only reacts or responds to what it's told. Mm. Most of us are trained in a manner you know to 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 either think inside the box to think outside the box but nowadays people are talking about thinking as if there's no box at all <laughs> like thinking in an opposite direction yes um what what is it exactly so inside the box is your routine mm. the robot that you become what your father told you what the teacher told you what your wife or husband told you i mean you become this robot who lives in a certain you come to work at 9 you go home at 5 every 12 o'clock you go for your lunch box this you know everything is conditioned you wake mm. you up you wear your clothes you brush your teeth all this is a mechanical things mm. right and the moment you start looking at yourself from a different paradigm when you travel out of country you go to a different place you come out of your normal circumstances mm. things start to change for you mm. that becomes the outside the box kind mm. of thing 
Whereas the idea about not being in the box at all is that you're always creative, you're always open, you're always mm. flexible, you're always nimble. Mm. You're never caught up in that. Uh, nowadays with the uh, internet and with the uh, phones mm. and everything, people don't have to be in an office all the time. Mm. They can work mm. in a coffee shop, they can work mm. wherever they are. So it gives them a chance to be more creative, more outside mm. the normal circumstances. Mm. And so they can experience the not being in the box mm. uh, phenomenon right mm. uh, sometimes you can be out of the office but still be in the box because mm. your mind is still thinking so narrow mm. this is the this is my my life right mm. but the life is the whole world, world is a village now mm. yeah. when when europe was going through industrialization process there's the moment to call a renaissance you know spread of new ideas when we saw people like galileo uh, coming on board copernicus and so many discoveries uh, it's also happening right now, whereby people are coming up with new ideas and sometimes they seem to be rebellious and radicals and people are like, ah, this, no, uh. even in companies you suggest a new, a new idea, people feel like it's, you know, against our norms and traditions. How best can you survive in an environment where people feel like it's not um, yet and we are, you have to wait? Well, this is something which is burning in your in your heart, in your spirit, and you believe in it. It's a new idea; it has never been there before. But that is invasion. How 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 can one survive uh, to excellency in a society, in families, in areas where people they don't believe like this is the time to invite new ideas or an idea which has never been there before? So, if you look at the world today, if you look at what is one of the best companies in the world to work with, if you really look at it you find out that Google is one of the best places to work with. Mm. If you look at Google, the way they operate their business, it's, it's so different from the past. Mm. How creative they are, how they have meditation centers, how they, it's so different, everything is so mm. different. So the point is, and they're one of the best companies in the world. So your model is now changing. It's no longer the, the IBM, the blue suit, <laughs> the white shirt, mm. uh, the company this time, go at this time. Right? It's much more different, right? Mm. In, 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 in terms of new discovery, for instance, for organizations and companies, how important research and development is? So, research is important because, uh, because you save uh, mistakes, because mm -hmm. you know what's going on, you know the reality of what's going on, mm -hmm. instead of uh, not knowing the reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it makes you have the edge if the other people don't know and you know. Mm -hmm. So you can make the right decisions in terms of products, in terms of services, in terms of how you deliver things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sometimes by the auto-suggestion process of feeding in your mind that you want to be number one mm -hmm. in something, the mind also gets very creative and very mm -hmm. alert, so that creates mm -hmm. ideas about you being, uh, you know, um, attracted to the mm -hmm. research because, you know, this is where I can find the information mm -hmm. because you have a desire. Mm -hmm. uh, I know nowadays, in most cases, actually, when you go to companies, there are, there are, there are titles in the hierarchy, like the chief executive officer, the chief operations officer, but do you think at the time now to introduce positions like chief knowledge officer, chief information officer? Because without information now, people cannot even become creative. So people go, you know, with the same uh, levels of creativity and innovation, which may not necessarily compete in the in the, in the competitive job market. What do you think? Yes. So I think you know it's not the, the title you create; it's really the culture. Okay. You see, it's like you can have all the titles in the world, but what are the people with the title doing? Mm. They're doing the same thing, but they have a different title. Mm. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense, right? So it's really the culture of you know allowing people to be uh, knowledge driven, to be uh, attracted to wisdom, to have mm. uh, you know creative uh, approaches to things. That's mm. more important. Mm. But if the title helps, so be it. Why mm. not, right? And 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 what can 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 be done to incentivize or to to reward people who are, you know, using their subconscious brain nicely in organizations to make sure that they deliver, they perform, and they keep with the desire to keep on doing it. Because there should be sort of, you know, rewards and incentives to, yeah. to do it. If same. you create a culture of meritocracy, not mediocrity, mm. where you reward people for results, not effort, you reward results for outcome, not output, then mm. what will happen is people will become more result driven, more, more outcome driven. Mm. And and uh, if they're using their subconscious mind to achieve mm. the outcome and results, so be it. Mm. And then you become you reward people who achieve great success, and mm. you make people accountable for those who don't achieve success. Mm. And in the process, if subconscious mind is a vehicle that helps people to become successful, then you encourage that habit mm. and train people on that habit, and then let them use it because it makes them more successful. Mm. 
in our generation today, people value very much material accomplishments because this is something people can see than any other form of accomplishment. How do we create that culture where people value knowledge, people appreciate knowledge, and people respect knowledge? In order for individuals to have the desire, for instance, to uh, you know, work on the subconscious part of the brain to become more creative and innovative, there should be some sense of appreciation for people who are knowledgeable. How can this be built uh, against the capitalistic system in which they look more at what you have in terms of material stuff, cars, houses, money, instead of the knowledge you have, like we used to see before uh, during the philosophers, the likes of Rumi, Socrates, who are not necessarily very rich, but who are respected for the you know, contributing to the board of knowledge. So richness, you know, can be defined in different ways. Mm. One richness is that you have physical money as richness. Other one is you have wisdom, mm. you have knowledge, you have mm. uh, insights. That's mm. richness. And the other way to look at richness is not how much you have, but it's how much you give. Mm. So if you have a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, a lot of money, but you don't mm. share your wisdom, your knowledge or your money, you're very poor. Mm. And how, what is the difference? We normally confuse two knowledge and wisdom. Is every knowledgeable person wise or is uh, every wise person knowledgeable? I think there are, there are stages. Is mm. You have a, a raw data, mm. then you have information, mm. then you have knowledge, mm. then you have understanding, okay. then you have insights, okay. and then you have wisdom. Okay. So raw data is here at the basic, and then it goes to information, then it goes to knowledge, then it goes to understanding, mm. then it goes to insights, then it goes to wisdom. Mm. So wisdom is high much more powerful than just raw data or information or knowledge. Okay, as I want to borrow from your experience, and this is very important. I know so many people um, have ideas, and because today we are talking about the brain, how can people commercialize their ideas? I know people pay you for the kind of ideas you have, for the wisdom you have. And we have so many people nowadays who are very knowledgeable, but they don't know really how to commercialize, how to put value into ideas, into information, into knowledge which they have. How best did you do it and how can other people do it? So I think if people have the information, the knowledge, uh, how uh, it's leadership. Leadership is the one who builds capacity. Mm. Leadership is the one who ignites passion, ignites a spark in people. Leadership is about, you know, mentoring, coaching, energizing, empowering people to get them to do much more than they think they can. Mm. And by uh, giving them confidence, involving them, uh, engaging them, and giving them some responsibility and suddenly people will deliver if they have the, mm. the knowledge already. Eh? And what is the contribution of think tanks into that? Well, I think the idea mm. is to allow people to meet together, to share ideas, to not have any restrictions. If people are doing a brainstorming session, there's no mm. stupid idea. Mm. Never mm. say it's a stupid idea, you will start, start, stop talking. Mm. Whatever ideas come, you sprain. Sometimes the 40th idea is going to be the game winner. Mm. But if you start uh, putting people down on some ideas, you will never get to 40. And also the best way to generate ideas. So I think allow that space and time where people are not caught up with deadlines, where you come out of your shell and, and think creative about mm. ideas. And what do you think in terms of technology? Nowadays ideas are all over the place and sometimes they're very misleading, you know, because people don't want to think anymore. You go to Google and, you know, you get everything. If you are to answer an exam, you go to Google. If you don't do anything, go to Google. Uh, what, what are the advantages and disadvantages of, you know, relying upon technology in, in terms of promoting thinking skills? So advantage is that you have information at your fingertip. Whatever mm. you want to know, it's there. Mm. Right? So it's an advantage. It saves you time to go to the library, to buy a book, to do many things. So it's mm. an absolute advantage. You can watch any videos you want. The disadvantage is that because there's so much information, you don't know where to start. Mm. So you can be overwhelmed by the number of information. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have to be selective in what to trust, what not to trust. Okay. Who is the source and all that. Sometimes people get lazy and not look at that. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is very important and organizations know that. And people hire trainers for, 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 for improving knowledge within organizations. When I want to make a decision to buy a trainer in, in a particular area of, of company interest, uh, what should I be my you know, check, checklist sheet in order to get the right person for the job? So in some way, it's not much different from interviewing the staff that you're hiring. Mm. Why do you want this staff? What is the goal of this staff? What is how you're going to measure the success of the staff? Mm. You know what? So you take time to. As I said to you before, my daughter, when you, she was interviewed at the university, eight people interviewed her, mm. two diff, two at a time in four different locations, mm. because they took the interview very important. Mm. So when you're hiring a trainer or a coach, you need to know what is my outcome I expect. Mm. 
Mm. What is this person going to help us with? What is mm. the problem we're trying to solve? And then looking at what criteria the person should have to mm. be able to do a great job for us. Mm. And then using that and then you interview people and you get an idea of who's the best fit for you in terms of the skills you're looking for, the capacity, the capability, the background knowledge and so on. Okay. And as if in a situation whereby I'm leading an organization and people do not have the culture to, to read or to upgrade their skills. Somebody has been to school and he has a degree and that is okay. But I have a feeling probably I want them to advance more, to read more and to increase knowledge outside mm -hmm. academic knowledge. What can be the systems which you can put in place to encourage you to build that culture within? So, I mean, if there are some rewards in terms of uh, people who upgrade themselves, who study, who upgrade their knowledge, their skills, you know, uh, I regard as there's some uh, some points for that in terms mm. of your performance measurement. Mm. Like, you know, I'm, I have three professional accounting degrees. Mm. So even though I don't practice it, I still have a degree. So they keep sending me, I have to do so many points every year, okay. professionally develop, otherwise I lose my degree. Mm. So you're forced to do certain things, right? So in a, in a corporation, you may say, for this position as manager, you have to have so many hours of learning. And okay. there are topics you can learn from. So okay. it's a force for you to keep up your position. Okay. Thanks, Azim, for the uh, conversation. Uh, today we were discussing auto suggestion and how people have learned a lot. Uh, my name is Poma Shauri and this is Masterclass Series. I was with Azim Jamal and the topic was auto suggestion how to train your brain. Thanks for watching Masterclass Series and see you next time. <laughs>